Happy Thursday. Good morning. Good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. This is the Build Mastermind. We meet every single week on Thursdays. Uh, We love to talk about everything building, business, personal. We are striving for mastery in every area. We believe that everybody is capable of an incredible amounts of success. And so we break down tiny little micro parts of every part of our lives every single week. Um, The last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on buyer. We had listings last week. And today we are going to go over personal and professional branding. Now, this is an interesting concept because uh, if you if if you're in in our our news list, so I, I send out an email every Sunday that I write up, you know, in real time every single week. Um, but I talked a lot this week about what a brand is, and I want to kind of go over that first because I think people getting into real estate, they have this, in my opinion, misconception, and they put a lot of weight into some particular areas of the business that actually don't even move the needle. For instance, I have seen people spend weeks and thousands and thousands of dollars on a logo, okay? No joke. Like people will hire a graphic designer and go back and forth and try to perfect this logo for weeks as opposed to just getting down to business and executing some revenue generating activities, okay? So this is, that's my number one perfect example of what a brand is, what a brand is not, okay? Now I'm gonna make a case for this because yes, you want to have some branding, some familiarity with the market, some sort of recognition with your brand. But guys, brand starts with you. So we're gonna gonna dive into that. What does that mean? A lot of people, especially in, you know, real brokerage, we are known for the sneakers and the uh, videos, right? Like the social media videos and reels and all these cool things. And the level of production that some agents have in their social media accounts is absolutely incredible. Like I'm jealous. I have FOMO on some of the reels and the production that people have in this company. It's incredible. Um, But is that their brand? Is actually the production level of that reel or of that social media post, is that their brand? There's a case to be made that it is not. There's a big case to be made that it adds to it. There's a case to be made that that certainly enhances it and accentuates it. A brand at the end of the day has a lot more to do with your ability to execute and the consistency with which you execute, therefore building a reputation and a track record, in my opinion. What do you think about that, Ed? My way off base? Not at all. You started out by saying the brand is you and the brand is you. And so if you are a dog lover and everybody knows you're a dog lover, that's going to be part of your brand, right? Uh, for Rachel, Rachel is going to bring fire and, and, and come at you. And that's her brand. She's not going to sugarcoat anything to you. And that that's been her brand, right? Uh, it does start with you. You are you are spot on, girl. And then it can build from there. It, it can build. And I think the logo is great. That's perfect. Everybody needs something. But it's just to, I think logos make us feel a certain way. So when I see the Novak team, I don't go, I, I probably couldn't even tell you what the Novak team's logo looks like. I think <laughs> it's an N and that's all I've got. But the brand doesn't make me think of that that visual. That brand makes me think of Mike and Rachel and who they are and what they are. And, and that is when you win with a brand. Yes, that is exactly right. So, you know, I think there's a lot of people that will put weight, like I said, into, you know, a, a production level of reels or they'll put a weight into a particular outfit or hair color or or accessory or, you know, picture with this particular hat or shirt or shoes or something like that. And at the end of the day, like, while well, that can be a part of it. That can be, you know, a recognizable asset or, you know, accentuation of your brand. Like identifying what you want people to feel like is what is your brand. So it's really, really important. And and one of the things that we've done on our team um, really consistently is we have set a, a, basically we've created a set of core values. 
And in my email this last weekend, I sent out a challenge to everybody there to like, do you have your core values where people who think about you, clients who think about you, other agents in the market who think about you, people who don't even know you, who are just getting to know you, do your core values resonate with who that person is getting to know or who that person already knows, right? That is what is going to help create your brand. So do you have some clearly identified core values or do you identify with a group of people who have them and you also embody them, right? That's the beauty of creating a group of people or a team or being in a company that has these incredible core values. You can share in the community of those core values and identify with them and use them, right? Do your clients, do your colleagues, do your teammates know those values? Do those resonate with them as well? Who do you show up as? Who do you show up as every single day? Because guys, at the end of the day, when, when you're first starting out in real estate, people, people buy what you do, right? You're, they're, they're seeing, especially if you're brand new or if you're newer to the industry, like people are going to go off of what you're able to convey to them in regards to value, in regards to process, right? We talk a lot on this mastermind about selling the process as opposed to selling you know, the, uh, the features or the customizations or the services that you provide in any, any particular you know, process, buy or sell process. People are gonna buy what you do in the beginning, okay? And as you execute, as you actually get into the business, as you actually continue to communicate, as you actually work with a high level of integrity, as you actually show courage and show up for people and continue to build a track record, people will start, you know, eventually going from buying what you sell and buying what you do to then buying who you are. That is branding, right? People, like, we've gotten to the point now, you know, when Mike and I first got back into the industry, we were in the industry uh, from 2003 to about 2009, shucker. Right. If anybody knows about the Great Recession, we got out for a minute. When we came back in in 2016, we didn't have a track record. We didn't have any brand recognition. We didn't have any trust built in the market. We had nothing. All we had was what we could sell. Our skills, what we could say we could do. That's all we had. And so it was a lot of work, like almost some days insurmountable feeling amount of work to show up every day, seven days a week for several years. And being able to show up every day, being able to communicate clearly, being able to do what we say we're going to do, fulfill the promises or exceed the promises that we're making. You build a track record, you learn, you pivot, you evolve. And then over time, as you build that track record, people no longer just buy what Mike and I sell. People know, like, and trust us because of our track record and because of who we are and because of how we execute. And their sales resistance is almost gone in most cases. Okay, that, that is the point of a brand. A point of a brand isn't to be recognized as the person with the hat or the person with the shoes, the person with this color of logo or to Ed's point, like most people, like our logo is probably unrecognizable. We're not Nike, right? But when people think of us, they think of integrity, they think of aggressive, they think of hardcore, and they probably think of straight shooters because this is something that we've executed on for years consistently what do you add to that michael I want to ask you guys about the difference between personal and business branding because the two are a little bit different and both matter um you know in real estate it's a highly relationship type business you know like people go off of that relationship they've built with you so the personal brand is very very important but i think there's also some really important business brand dynamics in particular for like teams you know like what is the reputation what is this team known for and and, and things like that do you guys want to talk about that a little bit yeah, what you got? <laughs> I I was just going to I was going to play off before we go to that. I was going to play off. I think I think the brand also you'll know if it's working correctly. I think referrals come from branding. I, I know it comes from your COI, your SOI, all that stuff, but it's because of your brand and who you are. And I think 
I think they do mesh together. So the people that know us personally and know us in business uh, see us, see our brand as both, right? We know they give back to the community. We know they're doing these things, but we also know they're highly successful in business because they do these things. Uh, so they can mix together. Obviously, you can have just a business brand, and that's great. I think in our business, we all have to have that personal brand along with it, though. I think that's very key to to win in this game. I agree. Absolutely. What do you see are the, the differences specifically, Michael, to elaborate on Ed's? Well, I think, I think a business, like, you know, you need to have track record um, and you need to stand for something. And then personal is like, you know, what are, what is the, what is the individual known for? You know what I mean? Like, I, Ed, when I think of you, I think of like what you do with the Boy Scout the group that you're associated with. And I think about somebody that owns hundreds of doors of real estate. So like, to me, that's the brand of Ed Stratton. You know what I mean? Like, that those are the two things that I, I think of most when I think about you. And so I, I just wanted to understand your guys's, um, the way that you would differentiate those two things. Like, I don't really think about the Stroud group, to be honest with you. Like, I'm sure I would if I was a buyer or seller in your market, but I think about Ed Stroud, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so uh, you cut out a little bit there, so I missed a little bit of that. But for our market, I think the people in the community see us a lot because we work in the community. In the community. So people know us. We also brand through, uh, we use some some commercial type stuff to help brand us. Uh, we use Barbara Corcoran, obviously, in our area, and that brands us with Barbara. And so we started doing that uh, three, four years ago. And anytime we're in the community now, people look at us and, and they come up walking to, they walk up to us and go, you guys are the ones that, that have the commercial, aren't you? And so that's more brand business. I would say, because they're seeing our company and they're seeing Barbara saying, hey, you should use these people. Uh, uh, that's more brand business. But then once they get to know us, they get to know us personally as as what what we do and why we do it. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know if I answered yeah, I think, all your question, Mike. So I, I couldn't. Well, I think on, on that note, Ed, I, I mean, I agree. I think that, you know, for us, like we our team really prides ourselves and part of our team brand is the ease with which the process is right. So with other agents, other agents know, like, and trust our brand of our team because they know that we're on top of it. They know that we have great inter-team communication. Um, our TCs, our admin are high level, you know, TCs and support people. So they know that if they get into a contract with us, number one, we're going to close the deal 99.9% .9 of the time, right? This thing's going to the finish line. We're going to fight fair. We're going to be firm, but we're going to be fair. Our TCs are going to be on top of communications. We're not going to, you know, drop the ball in regards to contingencies. We're not going to, we're not going to drop the ball in regards to communication or getting clients to uh, perform on time. Um, they know that our team coaches our clients well. So our, our clients walking into the process know what to expect. Like those are things that are part of the brand of our team. And those are the things that we train to, right? In regards to new people coming in, uh, new agents joining the team, we train to like, these are the processes we, we follow. All of these are the, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures that we have in order to maintain the brand in our marketplace. The beautiful thing about that team is there are so many different personalities on our team, right? We've got the, the Sue's and the Michelle's on our team who absolutely resonate with this demographic over here. And then we have the Mantels who resonate with this demographic over here. And then we have Mike and Rachel who resonate with this. Dem like we have all these different people who, you know, maybe you don't specialize in any one specific demographic, but we've, we've hit so many different personalities and communities, right? Gyms or churches or, you know, kids groups or whatever. Whatever it is, right? There's so there's so many different opportunities in order to brand each person on this team, so they can be not only branded as themselves, who they are, what they're into, what sports they're into, activities they're into, but they can be branded as a team, knowing that the process will be smooth, that there are standard operating procedures in place that they follow, that their clients are are coached up and coached well. So it's it's a it's a twofer. So I think for me, like that's kind of the difference, right? I think a lot of agents 
will be hesitant to join a team because they don't want to lose themselves, right? They like to be branded as themselves and as they should, they are their brand, right? To that point. But if, if you as a team leader, if there are team leaders on this call or watching this, if you as a team leader can create a brand that is not necessarily you have to fit this mold of a person, but rather the brand of this team is I am a, a, I'm going to coach my client. We have really like similar processes every single time. We are known for closing deals. You can create a brand that people can step into and still have that individual brand within the umbrella of your team. That is where you're going to find the most success. I agree. I was going to say, I, I think part of our personal brand is the things we do outside of work. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if I had to say what the Novak's personal brand is, I would think uh, health and fitness, the gym would be one, uh, maybe the, maybe the jujitsu area. So, so I think about me, I sell, I sell to scouting people a lot. I sell to my basketball group. I play with every Wednesday a lot. Any little organization I'm a part of or, or my own personal brand comes out there in a different way every time, I think. And all of a sudden, I'm selling to different groups all over the place. And, you know, I think after they meet me personally in those areas and get to know me, then they go out and look at my company brand and start looking around and saying, hey, these guys are the real deal. So, uh, so branding, I think it's a little different everywhere you go in some, in some ways, right? Personal. Yeah, I think the, you, that the personal brand is really um, super critical and developed through the personal relationships. Like, how are you known and received in your community and the ecosystems with which you contribute to? Um, like kids' school, jujitsu, the gym, all those types of things. That's where your personal brand becomes super important. Um, and then the business is really what you're describing, Rachel, is execution. Right? Like when you're describing all those things, I just think like, okay, um, you know, the reputation and the brand of the business then becomes based off of the execution and track record, you know? 100%. I think that's a really key part to, um, you know, people coming into the industry, you know, where do I get my leads? Where do I get clients? Where do I, how do I, how do I start building authority in the space? And we talk a lot about the skills and the language patterns and, you know, the things that you need to know and relatively have a good understanding of in order to answer the question, how's the market, right? But I think a lot of people overlook, I know Michael and I did, especially the first year, we really overlooked investing in the out of office time, right? We, we really were in office and we were pounding the phone. I mean, 77 of the 79 deals we did in our first year were PPC leads. Like none of them were sphere. We had zero emphasis whatsoever on sphere. And as the years have gone by, we've seen more and more and more return actually spending time in those areas that we enjoy. So spending time in the gym, going to our kids practice at jujitsu, making conversation and building relationships with people in those communities that we're already a part of that we already enjoy, because it's an incredibly genuine way to build authority with people that already know, like, and trust you because you have a similar like, you have a similar association with something, right? And so for agents, you know, coming in, new people coming in, like, do not overlook the ability to commingle a hobby or an outside of work interest with potential business, but it takes time. It takes time to build those relationships for sure. Now, does anybody on the call have anything kind of to pitch in on this? Like what area of your life that have you found a lot of success or have you um, achieved any level of success with either converting people, building relationships with people? Love to hear from somebody else other than myself. Oh, do we just start naming names? Call them out, Rachel. Don't don't be scared. I just might know if they're. Uh... I'm gonna call on if Jen is available. I'm gonna call on her because she was brand new to our area. She had no sphere. She thought she had a really limiting mindset the first year about how, you know, no, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna buy or sell with me because I'm new and I'm new to the area. And yet there she is. Jen, tell us some evolution of your PCSOI because you've done uh, over a handful of deals over the last couple of years now from PCSOI. Yeah. Um, I think 
in the beginning, it wasn't a limiting mindset that nobody would want to buy or sell with me. It was simply that I had moved states. I was brand new in the area when I joined the Novak team. And um, I also was working a lot. <laughs> like I didn't have a lot of free time to go commingle with other human beings outside of a work environment. So um, I got to know the team really well, of course, um, but I didn't have the the juice or the the time to invest really in diving into some of the um, personal, like out of office, like your guys are talking about time frame. Um, and I think for me, the the biggest piece of that that eventually led to success was just to realize this is a season, kind of like you talked about your guys' first few years when you started back in 2016. It's literally just grind time. And then when you start to have that momentum built and you can start to reallocate some of your time and your resource of time really into that, that's when you can start to um, focus on building that personal brand, which translates into your business brand. Um, for me, one of the key pieces um, in my PCSOI business has been my brother. So he he moved to this area almost a decade prior to me. He's a very social creature. He has a lot of really deep connections in the area through his work and things like that. And we're very close. So the little bit of time I did have outside of work, I made sure to, con I mean, because I wanted to, of course, spend time with my brother and his wife, but they're social creatures. So they looped in their friends a lot of the time. And over the course of, I would say, probably at least two years of just getting to know these people little bits at a time, um, I started to be able to make those connections between me and them without my brother as the mediator, of course. And so almost all of my PCSOI business has been through his friend group. Um, and then that continues to grow. And then as you get past clients and you've got friends of friends, those sorts of things, now it's like, I have the time to kind of love on these people. I have the time to continue nurturing and building that. Um, but for me, I think the biggest piece was the mindset in the very beginning. Like this is a season um, that will get there. Trust that you're going to get there. You just have to sometimes put your head down and grind and it's okay to do that. Um, having the foresight and the long vision, I think is really key in that instance. I don't, uh, I don't know if this goes along with brand, but you brought up something that I preach on a lot and it's everybody talks about their SOI. When you get really good, you start talking about your SOIs, SOI. That's when you start really building some big stuff. And that's what you, you exactly did that. And that's pretty awesome, girl. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's important also to kind of note on that, that there's there's a fine balance between being strategic about where you're spending that time, right? And it being a genuine experience because it's, it's really easy to say like, oh, I think a lot of people are going to go to networking events with like the intent of business, right? And there's a fine line, like, like yes, we go to, um, you know, we try to intentionally spend time at our gym or at our jujitsu gym community we're part of and invest back into those communities with the strategy, of course, of, you know, business. But first, it's genuine relationships. And I think that people can feel the difference if you're showing up for a strategic, you know, business uh, building experience or if you're showing up for a strategic relationship building experience. And so this is kind of obviously turned into a little bit like SOI building too, but I think that they go hand in hand. I think that when you ha have a track record and you're building a track record and you're in the thick of it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel very good, right? It doesn't, it doesn't feel fun. Nothing about building a business in this industry is fun or easy or balanced uh, in any way whatsoever. But once you're kind of through that crest to Jen's point, and you're able to then spend intentional time in the areas with which you have genuine interest and can build genuine relationships, that's when it starts compounding. So, because then you have a track record. I, I don't know if anybody else has, but I, I know that like in the first year or two, again, to Jen's point, first year or two, the people who are closest to you, they don't really want to do business with you. Like I, a lot of people get into real estate and they're like, oh, like all these people that I know, they're going to, of course, want to buy and sell with me. Or, you know, people bring to the industry will go, I'm upset because my aunt or my, you know, cousin or my neighbor listed with somebody else. It's like, okay, first of all, 
you cannot be that entitled to think that everybody that you know, just because you happen to go 90 hours in a real estate and get your license, that they're obviously just going to list with you immediately. Like that's not, that's not going to happen. Okay. First of all, <clears throat> second of all, they want to see that you can do it. They want to see that you can build a track or that you're going to stay consistent with it. And then they're like, oh shoot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Now I know I can trust her and she's good at what she does. So now we'll go. We tell every new agent that comes in our company, we tell them, who's your best friend? And they say, oh, Lisa, Lisa's my best friend. I said, would she use you? Well, I assume she would use me, but have you ever had a conversation with her? No. Well, quit assuming because you're going to be mad one of these days when Lisa uses Mike Novak over there and leaves you in the dust. <laughs> I, go ask that person, say, look, I'm getting ready to get into this industry. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be super hard. And I'm asking because you're my good friend. I'm asking for help. And this is what this is what I would like from you. Number one, do you would you trust me to sell your home? Number two, would you refer me to other people? Because I need people to help me win in this business, right? And mm. if you never have that conversation, you're going to be upset one of these days. <laughs> yeah. I think it's also really important to note that in order for your um your personal brand to carry weight right with your sphere or whoever and for them to actually have that trust like you're talking about ed to say when you ask that question would you trust me to help you for them to say yes you have to earn it first you know if you're freshly licensed you've never done a tra transaction before and you come to them i would i would be surprised if they said yes because you haven't shown that you can execute yet and so, yeah, during that time where I was um, spending minute amounts of time with my brother and his fear, they they had friends that sold with other people. And I definitely was friendly with them. We talked about things. And when they sold with other people, I'm like, hey, this is a lesson to me that I haven't shown them my track record enough to know and trust that I could take care of them better than that other agent. And so all that did was make me grind harder. So I have that track record, I can speak to it. And now those relationships not only are genuine and authentic in the personal brand way, but my business brand is also carrying over. I think it's really important to note that you, you have to earn that trust and respect from your sphere, not just because of your friendship, but your, your business is brand stinking new and they right. want to know that they can actually close with somebody, you know? I would tell you some cheat codes on that though, or the fact that, uh, and I, from a team standpoint, I see this all the time when teams boast their agents out there and say, gosh, Jen's killing it, doing a great job, blah, blah, blah. That closes that gap a little quicker because anything on social media is true, right? I mean, we all believe that, but, but it truly is a cheat code, I think, because I think it allows, if I keep saying this agent the last three months have been killing it and doing good things, and I'm not going to say that unless they are doing some stuff that's really good. Uh, even if it's just scripting and getting their scripts down, I'm going to boast that these guys are doing really awesome. And all of a sudden what happens is I'll be out somewhere and they'll go, Hey, that gin girl on your team she, seems like she's kicking some butt. And I'm thinking, yeah, she sold one or two, but, but in all reality, she is kicking butt because she's doing all the right things. So it's just funny how social media works some days. Well, hundred percent. Like I, it, that was, a, I think a, a big part of, you know, this discussion around brand is, I mean, what you see on social media, you have to take with a grain of salt, right? You cannot believe every video you can. And you also cannot see and look at people who are like posting amazing reels or posting these incredible graphics. And, and like, that does not equal actual success. That does not equal actual execution. Right. And so the, the kicker is like while you're striving for views, while you're striving for likes, while you're striving for exposure, you have to be backing it up with action and execution. You have to be able to say, like, not only are these things true, but like, for instance, Ed, you are one of the most successful people, like the legitimately most successful people who you, you have a building company, you own insurance companies, you have a property management company, you run a real estate team. I mean, your corporations are like vast and and wide and and you have zero ego about it and looking at your social media you would think that you're just like a onesie twosie dude right <laughs> like i love that about you like i love love that about you because when people meet you and know you in person there is no like there's no ego about it it's just like well this is just what we do 
right? There's no, there's no arrogance. Well, there's, there's no, like, you're going to celebrate your teammates, of course, and you're going to celebrate milestones, but you're not putting fluff out there. And, and more importantly, it's, it's the, it becomes your tribe of people. So uh, right back to you guys, the same way you guys are very successful, but it's not what we throw out in the world. Right. Uh, you know, and success is measured in many different ways. So to say, Oh, wow, you've got a lot of this. I don't care. It's, it's, who are you? Who are you as a person? Yes. And that is where I see people super succeed in this business. The guy that's out there throwing all the crap sooner or later, he's going to fizzle out. It's the people that, that truly care about what they're doing. And when I sit down with a client, and I tell them that I have all this experience because I buy a lot of my own properties like that. And I'm going to use my experience like like I'm buying another property, but I'm going to work with you on it. That means something to them. They're thinking, gosh, this guy really cares. And it's not just, hey, another another number up on his board over there. So uh, you either really do care or you don't. And if you don't, I don't know that this is the business for you. I think it's you're going to be you're going to be found out at some point. Right. Uh, yeah. and again, all of this is part of your brand and we see it in our market all the time. I'm sure you guys see it up in your markets as well. hundred percent. Well, and I think that it's, again, it's the difference between people who get into the industry and have an intention of selling, right? Cause people will buy what you sell. People are, people are going to buy what you sell. They're going to buy your language patterns. They're going to buy what you, the promises you make, like that, that's going to work in the short term for sure. But eventually Time after time, people are, are only going to buy who you are, right? They're going to buy what to the I love, point. They're going to buy what you sell. They're going to review what you do. Though is the problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Spot on. That's exactly right. We've got a couple minutes left. Does anybody have any notes on this? Anything you're taking away and walking away with this saying, okay, this is this is what I need to improve on, or this is where I need to spend more time, or um, maybe somebody ha doesn't have core values established and they don't know exactly what, what that lens is to be looking through in regards to clients or, you know, the, the actions that with which they need to stay aligned with. I think that's what the, the core values for us really do is, you know, am I, am I walking, am I staying in alignment with these 10 values? Like, am I, am I exhibiting the behaviors and exhibiting the, the personality of somebody who is in alignment with perseverance and integrity and vulnerability and courage, right? Like these things that I, I believe are, are true core values of mine. Rachel, when you send that out into the world, don't you feel like that's what you get back is those type of people that see all that and say, you are who you are. And I like that. And that's kind of how I am. Right. I think you attract what you are, right? Yeah, isn't it like your vibe attracts your tribe, something like that? Yeah, who do you show up as every day? Exactly. Through the facade, if you're not authentic as well, like people are smart and they know, um, you know, so I, I, if you're going to put stuff out into social media, it, it better be aligned with who you really are. In my opinion, whether that's, you know, what people love or not, that really doesn't matter, but just be who you are. 100%. You can be everything to everybody. I can tell you that. Exactly. I think a lot of people in this industry try to do that, Ed. Like to that point, I think a lot of people come into this industry and there's there's a level of um, chameleon that we have, right? There's a level of um, understanding and learning to work with different personality types. That's why we spend so much time on language patterns and learning the disc profile and learning how to communicate with different personalities, even if we happen to be a different personality than that person, right? Like there's an art to it, it for sure. But there's also an authenticity to it that you can you, you have to maintain. And I think that absolutely is a is a big key in your brand. Like, can can I get along with somebody who's a really high eye like I am and have t you know a three hour appointment? Yeah, of course, absolutely. And it's a blast, and both of us walk away super happy, and our love tanks are full. Can I also spend forty five minutes with a super high DC and give them the data and give them exactly the information that they want and like answer super quick? Like not ask them or repeat myself too many times so that they feel heard and they also feel confident. Yes, yes, I can because I've done that. I've I've experienced that. I've I've trained for that. That doesn't make me less me. That doesn't make me inauthentic. That makes me that it shows that I have skill and the ability to adapt to different personalities to give them the information in the medium with which they need it. 
I think that's definitely a part of your brand. So show of hands on this call, does everybody have core values outlined, established? And how about a mission statement? There we go, Marvin. Thank you, sir. Love it. Well, Ed, Michael, any parting words? I think we've uh, bit some fire on this personal and professional brand, boiling it down to core values, authenticity, of course, skill and building. One thing about branding, uh, both personal and business is the consistency. I don't, maybe I missed it if we were talking about that, but I see like, a, like a chocolate we it's where um, there's like an awesome, like two week push from an agent on their social media and then they get busy and they forget to do it again. And there's like this big long gap when nobody hears anything from them. I've definitely made that mistake myself before. And uh, I, I think it's something you want to definitely go into it with a plan. Like what is sustainable for you as far as a branding business plan goes? It doesn't mean you have to post 17 stories on your Instagram every day, but like what's the like, you know, a couple of things per week maybe that you could do consistently over a, you know, a period of years to develop brand recognition, and brand, brand authenticity. Go find so, your tribe. I think that's the other piece to it. It's just go find the people that are like you and, and pour into them and continue to build from there. They'll, they'll, they'll be the ones that share your brand. I promise you that. For sure. For sure. Love it. Well, thanks for the discussion today, guys. Hopefully you guys pulled something from it or feel affirmed in some way through this conversation and can move forward with some confidence building that personal professional brand cohesion. So enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Great to see you. And we'll see you next week on Build Mastermind. Bye, guys.